I hope you gave him the other money. Okay, so let's give that disclaimer. We, we have nothing to do with it. So, uh, let's go into character. How y'all doing? I'm Ted Lasso, I'm your new coach. <laughs> this is my wingman, Coach Beard. <laughs> wait, wait, well, wingman, that don't sound right because she's a girl. Wait, wing woman, that's my, wing woman. Like wing woman. Nobody says wing woman. Wing person must be bloody. That sounds sterile. Wait, I got it. Wing angel. That's my wing angel. That's not male or female. That's, that's gender neutral. Well, I'll just tell you, i got to tell you something right now. I love the feel of a new thought church. feels like potential. Who has raised their potential by being in a new thought church? Absolutely. Now, so you're, you're going to be That's, that's a greatness of uh, showing our, the greatness in everything. Right? Showing the greatness in everything. Like, I'll tell you something. You might be my wing angel. Do you believe in angels? I believe in angels. Believe. Do you all believe in angels? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Ted, do you believe in angels? Okay, so I do believe in angels, but I think it's more important that they believe in themselves. Ah, good point, right? That's, that's an example of how Ted, myself, <laughs> figures out a way to encourage people to love themselves. Believe. Yeah, believe. Believe. I believe in belief. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't even believe in the word impossible. When I see impossible, I say I'm possible. See? Positivity. Positivity. Right. So uh, so what we got over there, Coach Beer? What you got for me? What about liability versus potential? That's right. See, again, we talked a little earlier this morning about the flip side of the coin. There's a liability to every situation. There's a liability to me doing this new talk today that I'll forget everything I'm supposed to remember. <laughs> but there's a potential that I'll say something new that I didn't even think about that'll help me. Okay, we teach what we need to learn. Why does, why does Ted Lasso and I teach positivity? How, how many people know what the Enneagram is? Okay, just a few. So the Enneagram is a personality profile. Ted Lasso is a seven on the personality profile, which is what I am as well. Uh, Ted Lasso also is a fast person, which means he has ADHD, which is also what I have. So I can relate to him a whole lot. <laughs> ADHD sevens, we tend to want to teach what we have the most trouble feeling. Joy and happiness and worthiness. So we decide we're going to become teachers. Why? So we hope that we get some of what we teach. Okay, so that just give you an example. We teach what we need to learn. Okay. What else you got? Well, I think, like, right from the, the start here, we should um, hand something out to everyone. I love handing yeah. stuff out to everyone. When you hand something out to everyone, it makes you feel good. When you give and receive, it makes you feel good. And you know why that is? Because they're the same. If there's only one of us, which New Thought teaches, then when we give, we're receiving because we're part of what we're giving to. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I, just, I just wrote that. I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> so we're going to give out little cards to everyone. We, we've given these out uh, years ago to, at a concert here. So if you were there, you're getting another batch of them. Because what they say is, thank you for, do, for who you are and doing what you do. Who you are is important. And what you do is appreciated. And so we like to give these out to people who just go above and beyond bringing kindness, joy, and inspiration to everyone around them. It could be a waiter or a waitress. It could be a, uh, a hotel housekeeper. And uh, so we like to give them out to them to let them know that they're doing a great job. And maybe to give it to someone who needs a little encouragement. They don't see their light. We give out the card just so they see how great they are. Hallelujah. And this is a song by my friend uh, David Alt. Do we all, any David Alt fans out there? This is his song, I'm Here to Remind You. Ted Lasso is here to remind you of your magnificence. <laughs> Oh, wait too long, the one that 
long to show you all the joy you're worthy of. things for the four agreements. So we're going to talk a little bit about how the four agreements work with me, Ted Lasso. I'm Ted Lasso and I'm your new coach. And uh, and how they work within Unity. And but first I have to acknowledge my good friend here, Fatina. Because when Fatina and I met, I decided to share with her some ideas about New Thought. And she decided to share some of her ideas about Islam. And guess what? They're weaving together all over the place. And she told me something that I did not know. Now y'all probably know this. I probably would have learned about it, but I scrolled into something else when it was told to me. But do you know that Jesus, our way shower, is a big dog in Islam? I mean, he's a big dog. I mean, they love Jesus in Islam. I didn't know that because some of the more traditional uh, churches have tried to tell us that we don't have anything in common with these other religions. But how many people knew that Jesus was a big guy in the Islam religion? Well, see, okay, so maybe some of you new folks learned that too that didn't know that. So that's awesome. And if you look at the great, uh, the great proverbs of the great religions, like the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, there's a different one for each religion, a different version of that same thing. It's almost like we're all one. It, it's almost like there's many paths, but only one God. That awesome. Yeah. Now, let me just tell you something. You know what the happiest animal on earth is? The goldfish. Do you know why the goldfish is the happiest animal on earth? Shortest memory. We beat ourselves up because of our memories. I, I got to share with you, this is the first time I've ever worn these. I got my Ted Lasso shoes here, socks here. They say, be a goldfish. They got the British flag and they got a little army man because he uses army men to help you feel more protected. I paid 20 bucks for him, socks. That's his whole outfit. His outfit was just a bunch of Angelina's dish rags she left around the house. I'm going to go. By the way, Angelina told me when I got this outfit, she said, that's a little much. I said, I've been hearing that my whole life. She says, well, I'll make a deal with you. You're not going to wear that to church, are you? I said, I'd love to wear this to church. She says, please don't wear that to church. She says, I'll make a deal with you. Why don't you wear black pants with it to tone it down a little bit? So I did that, and she was right. I said, we're going to New Smyrna. They love us. There's no way they're going to get rid of us. Can I please wear it? At a church that knows that they love us. But he did ask this morning. He has these fuchsia sneakers. And he said, can I wear my fuchsia sneakers? Yeah. I didn't bring them, so I had to wear these. <laughs> See, our house is a little bit like Congress. I'm Congress. I have many different confusing thoughts going on at all times. And Angelina's like executive power. She can veto anything I say. And that's okay. And that's okay. And that's okay. And then give, give, you know, give the queen. You know, put the crown on the queen. All right. All right. So let's talk a little bit about four agreements. What kind of, what's, a, what's a good agreement? Well, the, the first one is uh, be impeccable with your word. Be impeccable with your word. Okay. Now, one way to be impeccable with your word 
is never tell yourself or anybody that there's something wrong with them because that is not being impeccable with your word. Now you can say your behavior sucks, you know, you're, you, you stepped on my toe, or something like that. that, that's different. That's like telling somebody, hey, this behavior is wrong. But don't tell yourself or other people that there's something wrong with them. Or especially yourself. I just want to give you give an example of how maybe you've done oh, yeah. something like that before. Well, I, I am very hard on myself. I'm the biggest critic. And so, <clears throat> you know, I can look in the mirror and I see all my flaws. It's usually my hair. You know, it's frizzy. I can't do anything with it. There's a name for that, right? A lot of people have the disease. Men and women, Fabio had it. It's called herexia nervosa. It means you look in the mirror and your hair never looks right. I, I have that too sometimes. So I'm gonna give an example of what, what Ted would say, right? Oh my gosh, my hair, I'm having a bad hair day. It looks so bad today. Ted would say, I don't treat that like Woody Allen on the clarinet. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so basically, Ted, anytime anybody puts themselves down, you know, he comes back with a statement. He doesn't want people around him to put themselves down. And they feel it after a while that he's really genuinely concerned. Now, some people try to get you not to talk about yourself or complain about yourself or any of that in a different way because they don't want to be bothered by it. Ted doesn't try to get you to not talk bad about yourself because he's bothered by it. He wants you to not talk bad about yourself because he knows you're bothered by it. You see, there's a, he might say something like that. I'm going to treat that like Yoko Ono singing on the Beatles album. Yeah. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> anyway, it's the same kind of thing. So another way to be impeccable with your word is to always ask yourself, is it kind, is it true, or is it necessary? Right? Kind, true, necessary. So here's an example. True is the first thing you ask you if you're going to say something to somebody. Is this true? Well, if it's not, don't say it. Unless it's April Fool's Day and you're pranking your wife like all day. Like all day. Tell them, tell them, hey, hey, Coach Beer, tell them what the greatest prank I did for you on April Fool's Day. It was awesome. Okay, so our bedroom is upstairs. I was downstairs and that stairs and I heard this big crash upstairs. So I run upstairs. She also heard our mom saying some words we can't say in church. That's right. And so the flat TV was on the floor, like face down. And so, and, and our mind's all upset, and like, oh my God, I moved it, I tried to clean behind it, and, and so I'm just trying to support him and be calm and, and not say, you know, like, everything's okay, it's okay, it could be worse, you know, anything like that. And, uh, By the way, it could be worse. Please don't say that to people. That is what's called toxic positivity. And I'm gonna tell you why. We're gonna go into that real quickly, because okay. that's also, can I jump into here? Jump in. Yeah, I'm jump. No, finish your story. Don't, don't, uh, swirl. Don't, don't, don't forget. I'll remember okay. for you to that. So he, uh, everything was unplugged. I said, well, I'm sure it'll work. It's going to work. I know it. I just know it. And we put it back up, and it wasn't a scratch, a crack, or anything. I'm like, it's going to work. It's going to work. It doesn't work. <laughs> he unplugged it. It was on the floor. And so he goes, well, maybe if I plugged it in, he plugged it in. It worked. He gently put it on the floor and made this big bang with a chair or something. And the whole thing was an April Fool's. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, said, I said, honey, what today? What's today? She said, April. She goes, oh, and then she said some words I can't say in here. <laughs> let's spend the whole day praying. But anyway, we want to be impeccable with the words. So let's talk a little bit about impeccable positivity versus toxic positivity. Now, how many people have heard the phrase toxic positivity? Sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? Guess why? Because it is. If it's positive, it's not toxic. The closest phrase to toxic positivity would be spiritual malpractice. Now, who's heard that before? That's when you use spirituality to hurt other people, you know, to uh, oppress other people. So let me give you an example. If you write a meme that says, no matter what you're going through, other people are going through bad things too, and some of them much worse, that's fine. If something happens to you, like your house gets flooded with 100 gallons of water, which happened last October, to go, everything will be okay in the end. I know there's other people whose houses are underwater during floods and that makes you feel better, then that's not toxic positivity. But if you find out that somebody has gone through a horrible thing, let's, let's say an animal of theirs died and you go up, it could be worse, both your dogs could have died. How does that, you see, right? You see? Now, 
They somehow think they're trying to uplift you, but that doesn't. And you can tell if it's toxic if it doesn't uplift you. Or here's another great example. Somebody says, my partner left me having an affair with my best friend. Well, you know you created that. No. Don't use spiritual lies like that. If you want to see how you created the reality in your life, as long as you're not beating you up for it, see how you can have... Here's the deal. You don't really create none of it. You co-create all of it. And guess what? Here's what you do create. The way you decide to perceive it. That is your thoughts. That's your ideas. You have control over that. But there are seven and a half billion people all co-creating together. So it's not all on our shoulders that we make every single thing happen. What happens is we co-create that with others and we get to decide what we're going to think and feel about it. And your experience of something is what you have control over. So try not to do these toxic positivity. So that's important. So another thing that we do that we got, well, Ted taught us this. So when you say something, you might sometimes say something to to answer a question in a way you think they want to hear what they want to hear. And so there's it a special not, It might not be total. It total may not be totally the truth, but you're saying it just because you think that's what they want you to say. So when I was having trouble with my wife when I was in Kansas City, we went to see one of the therapists, and, and I found out something very important about Okay, We all know about girl talk, right? I learned what girl talk really is. Sometimes girl talk just means girl listen because I'm going to talk all the time, and I just need to listen. So the, our therapist said, me and my wife says, y'all need to come up with a code word. And the code word is whenever any, either one of you says anything and the other one is suspicious, use the code word. Now, our code word is Oklahoma. I can't tell you why it's Oklahoma, but it's Oklahoma. We just came back last, last Sunday. We were speaking at a church in Oklahoma. Go figure. So let's give you an example of how you use a code word with somebody. But did, did you say they have to tell the God honest truth? That's all. Oh, thank you very much. It's when you hear the word when Oklahoma. When you hear the word Oklahoma, you have to tell the God's honest truth. Y'all can use that with each other. Okay, try. So, Armand, when we get home, how would you like to make dinner tonight? I'd love to make dinner for us, honey. Really? Absolutely. Oklahoma? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> you see, so I was being nice because I knew that's what she wanted to hear. But when she asked the God's answer, no, I don't want to make dinner. When Angelina says, I don't want to cook dinner tonight, I get on the phone. Hello, Hikado sushi. I want one spicy tuna roll. I want one miso soup, one avocado roll, and some sake. Sake to me, baby. Yeah. So that's how I cook dinner. Okay, but when I told her, yeah, I'd love to make dinner for you. Sometimes we're not telling the whole truth. So we get to be impeccable with what we're worth. We always get to do our best. That's another one of the four agreements, always do your best. Now, I have a little issue kind of with always do your best because I believe deep down we're all doing our very best at any given moment given the consciousness that we have at the time. Would you agree with that? Yes. But we want to intend to be our best and do our best and be as positive and be as loving and being as kind, okay? Now, sometimes you may not do your best job. You may not play soccer, foot, we call it football, mm -hmm. I mean, guess what a field is called in, in, in England, I found out. It's called a pitch. Yeah, you're going out, you don't say you're out on the field, coach, or you don't say coach. That's called a gaffer. We go, go out on the pitch, gaffer. I'm learning all kinds of stuff. Did you know that in soccer, the all words for football, they, they, they can have ties. That would be the apocalypse in NFL if we ever tried to do a tie, right? So it's not about wins or losses. So, I have a philosophy. People get upset when my team doesn't do well. I have a philosophy. It's not about wins and losses. Okay? It's not about wins and losses. It's about doing your very best to be the best person you can be and your best to inspire other people to be the best they can be. So as a coach, my job is not to make sure my team wins. Okay? My job is to make each person on my team feel like a winner. And guess what? We'll have more wins that way. Boom! What else we got, honey? What else we got? Uh, well, we can uh, um, don't make assumptions. Oh, that's another that's one. Another... Don't make assumptions. <laughs> oh, here's a good example of assumptions. See? Yeah, good assumption. So, um, when we make up stories, okay, we don't really know. Like, give you an example. A guy, a guy gave me the finger the other day, and I can make up an assumption that he was saying something very bad to hit me with his finger. But I just made the assumption up. He says I'm number one. 
That's why I said that last night. Armand said that last night. I stole that from him. Okay. All right. Another thing that we can do with assumptions is we can size people up. Okay. You size people up and you figure out already what's going on. And that's not cool. There's an old saying. It's attributed to Walt Whitman, but I don't think he really said it. Don't be judgmental. Be curious. Okay? Don't be judgmental. Be curious. Be curious as to why somebody says it. Don't automatically say, well, they voted for that person. They must be a bad person. Be curious. Why would you vote for that person? Well, they were in alignment with my ideology or whatever. You get to learn something about people when you're curious versus being judgmental. I've been judged for many things in my whole life. Not, they weren't being curious. You know, people weren't being curious about why is Armand so weird? I was judgmental of Armand. And then I found out through a TED talk called Failing at Normal, and it's all about what ADHD people go through their whole life to try to fit in with other people. And I thought, oh my God, I've been working so hard. So when I started to learn about it and I got a little help, a little supplementation, a little medication, a little bit of therapy, I understood vastness even more. It was like putting on glasses and being able to see for the first time without squinting. Now, I can pull it off. I can pull off fitting in a normal world, not knowing anything, but it was a lot of work. And I always tell people, you should not have to do all that work all the time just to feel good. Find what you need. Get support. Get in some kind of a group. Get some medication if you need it. Eat better. Do more exercise. I meditate. woke up. I woke up here. Was that? Meditate. Meditate. Yeah, meditate, medicate, meditate and medicate. Whatever. Some of you got to do what you got to do. The trick is I woke up the other morning and I didn't feel so good. Okay, and then we went to yoga, and I got a whole bunch of dopamine. So and vitamin C. Them. And vitamin C, which is the, the second vitamin C in the vast world, is called vitamin connect. We need that. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, so that's it. That's it. Uh, uh, we, we got three of the ingredients. The only one we didn't get was don't take anything personally. That's right. That's right. Right. Well, you know, for me, because I'm always trying to be perfect, if I hear any critique or whatever, I do take that personally. So what I'm learning and working on is uh, don't be perfect. It's okay not to be perfect because always trying to be perfect is exhausting. I got to tell you, Coach, you're, you've done a real good job. You're <laughs> about as close as it gets. But anyway, <laughs> but the thing is, we don't have to take things personally, okay? You know, what, what other people say and think about you says a lot more about them than it does you. A lot more about them. So we don't have to do that. And guess what else? We get to know that things will work out. Well, let me talk to you a little bit about rom-coms. We, we're running out of time here because I could talk all day. Squirrel, um, how many people like rom-coms? How many people don't know what a rom-com is? A rom-com is short for romantic comedy. Okay, And rom-coms are some of our favorites. Our other favorites are rom-drums, which means it's a romantic comedy drama. And so you get a little bit of all. How many people saw the movie Coda? Coda won Best Picture this year, and Coda's uh, performed and written all about deaf people. And so a lot of the movie, they're signing, and I, I saw some of the signs we did, made me think of that movie, Coda. Coda stars Marley Maitland, who was in What the Bleep Do We Know, and was also in Children of a Lesser God, I believe, won an Academy Award for that. But, uh, but yeah, Coda is... How can you watch that movie? You have to get Apple TV. Well, that's Apple TV. Nobody has Apple TV. There's no affiliation in any whatsoever. Anyway, yeah, but it's on Apple TV. It's Cody. It won the best picture of the year, and it's all about the challenges that you go through as signing and, 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 and not being able to hear. And so it's fantastic. So, uh, but yeah, everything will be okay in the end. Romantic comedies. If a bunch of really attractive people living in wonderful lifestyles in a movie can end up getting past all their troubles, don't you think we can? Okay, so I, I believe in communism, wrong communism. That's romantic comedy. Don't they not put in, some, of these jokes should be, some of these jokes should get later on tonight. But anyway, I believe in wrong communism. I believe that life can be a romantic comedy. Okay? Sometimes life is really challenging. Anybody ever had that? In a, in a movie, that would be called The Dark Forest. Okay. Now, they never put the dark force in the beginning of the rom-com, or, the end, or the, the end of the rom-com, or the beginning of the fairy tale. It's always smack dab in the middle. And many times we are smack dab in the middle, okay? Fatina and I always reach out to each other when we're in that dark forest. 
and remind each other we will get through it, okay? Remind each other that everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, that's yeah. right. so that's here's, here's the phrase I always say to myself. Actually, it comes from a, a minister, a unity minister who passed a couple of years ago, and she comes to me, and she, when I'm ever I'm stressed and can't do something, she, she always says, you got this. And that just helps me so much because sometimes I need it a lot. And I always hear that voice, you got this. And so that's a really good thing for me when I'm stressed. Okay, I got this. You got this. Quick question. If you had the choice to be a panda or a lion, which one would you be? Raise your hand if you'd be a panda. Raise your hand if you'd be a lion. Leo. Now, there is no, that's right, there, there is no right or wrong answer. It's just different. Now, Rebecca, who happens to own the team that I manage in England, she said there's only one answer, lion. And I said, why? She goes, what's red, white and black and red all over? I go, I don't know, a book? She goes, no, a oh, a z uh, panda that gets anywhere near a lion. <laughs> now, the thing is, but I asked I asked one of my players, his name is Jamie Tart. You know who Jamie Tart is, a little hot shot. I asked him, Jamie Tart, panda or lion? And he goes, uh, on me, why would I want to be anything else? And I was like, I don't think you know how emotionally healthy that actually is. <laughs> anyway, all right. So let's finish off with everybody. Will be, everything will be okay in the end. I know you already know the words. Did I cover everything? Did I cover all my points, honey? Probably not, but who cares? <laughs> I think you did. We For did. Positivity versus true. We're out, of time, we're out of time, Armand. We're out of time. Whoa, we're out of time. So we're going to sing our song. Everything will be okay. Now, by the way, I'm getting ready.